Uh, and as you may be aware, the central bank uh, recently announced the completion of the financial uh, sector cleanup um, after uh, the after the last batch of savings and loans companies who failed to meet the new capital requirements had their licenses revoked and uh, and said the banks either consolidated, were absorbed, downgraded or dissolved. Now, those who felt unfairly treated have shared their grievances. Uh, some have headed to the court, whereas others have accepted their fate. Uh, the back and forth of who is to blame for the crisis in the financial sector is, is also quite uh, strong in the media. Uh, recently, we had uh, Dr. Addison, uh, uh, you know, his, his uh, own team is blaming the previous government uh, for shielding the rot. There's been a back and forth between the uh, former deputy governor of the central bank, Mr. Dr. Isiama, and the Bank of Ghana uh, with regards to how the entire process went about. Joining us in the studio tonight is former finance minister, Sir Tekbe, uh, to tell us all we need to know about the part his government played with respect to the financial sector crisis. And, you know, it's quite... Uh, interesting to know that Mr. Setekbe was finance minister, um, you know, between 2013 and 2016. A lot of people today, uh, especially within the opposition, have uh, sought to blame the now finance minister, Ken Oforeta. Most of them uh, seem to think that uh, he has engineered a lot of these uh, banking sector reforms. So it, it pretty, if, if that's anything to go by, then it tells you the, the, the strength or the influence of the finance minister uh, in any uh, administration. Uh, so we're privileged today to have Mr. Mr. Tekbe, a former finance minister. Thank you, Mr. Tekbe, for your time, and good to have you in the studio. What have you been up to lately? Well, thank you very much, and uh, <clears throat> good evening to your viewers and to your listeners. Um, well, I do a variety of things. I do some consulting, uh, not as <coughs> active as, you know, one, you know, had hoped, but I still something which I do. Um, I also do some research and I do some teaching, um, faithful to my UCC background. Um, so I do the most active is with the University of Ghana Business School. Okay. You know where I do more adjunct than than part-time lecturing, mm. uh, with <coughs> partnering about three lecturers. Okay. And, I do and, you, and you do a lot of travel, globe trotting mm. as well. Well, I'm on a various, um, a few committees. You know. Um, in the public financial management space and so that yes occasionally i do travel mm. uh, particularly along the sidelines of the imf world bank uh, and then uh, to a limited east african development bank spring and, and annual meetings so but i'm also preoccupied with uh, uh, issues at home i follow them uh, mm -hmm. as you may be aware i do you know occasionally you know express my views and i do also you know, right, you know, mostly to not just merely stating, you know, one's perspectives, but from a technical perspective, mm. often for the benefit of my students and others. Yeah. Right. Uh, and there's and been the a general public, yes. There's <laughs> been a lot of uh, back and forth. Uh, the financial sector cleanup um, started in 2016 when the new administration took office, and uh, we've seen a number of banks go down, we've seen savings and loans go down, as well as finance houses. And uh, it's been a trading of, you know, accusations, uh, you know, from the, the government and the past government. What's your own position on all that's happened so far? Well, that is certainly a position which I would hope I, I don't, you know, follow because it distracts. Um, and um, my perspective is um, official reports. And you'll be surprised. I haven't been able to download some of the 2018 reports, but I've downloaded and read some of the 2017 Bank of Ghana reports. Um, I have also read, I haven't read the latest Pricewaterhouse, you know, Cooper survey, which mm -hmm. has just come up. I've read other, you know, informed, you know, views. And <laughs> I think uh, it was President Obama who, you know, uh, cautioned us that what we need most you know, in, in Africa are uh, institutions. Mm. And I can assure you that the same issues of forex losses, the same issues of uh, um, subsidy, um, BDC, amounts owed to BDCs, uh, the same issues of, uh, uh, you may, you may, uh, litany of them which, which docked the banking system, continues to dock the banking, you know, sector today. Mm. Um, 
and, 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 and this is a context in which, you know, I therefore say that, yes, I do have an official perspective because we did have policies which, you know, I'm ready to discuss, not hoping that it, it, it contributes to the resolution of the, of the issues. Was your administration careless in the handling of the banking sector crisis? No minister for finance, no president, you know, would be deliberately careless, you know, in pursuing public policy. And this is why I talk about institutions. Politicians can go and, and come, but we do have public servants, <coughs> you know, like Mr. Achi, who I, I worked with on Gibbs, and um, the loan, for example, that is underwriting Gibbs, was something that we did. Would you say it was careless? No, we can pick and choose. <laughs> But you, you, know, know, you knew way beforehand, and when I say you, I don't mean you in particular, but your administration w knew way beforehand, before 2016. In fact, the World Bank Commission report on the state of the banking industry had stated clearly the challenges the banking industry was faced with. Can we do the first correction? Let's we go commissioned ahead. the report. You commissioned the report? Yes, the asset quality review okay. report. We commissioned Absolutely, the, the asset quality so review. It's the government of Ghana okay. that commissioned the so, report. So you knew quite well what was happening in the banking yes. industry. and the direct result is ESLA. The Energy Sector Levies Act, if you read it carefully. Remember, let me, let me just, you know, go back, you know, a bit mm. and say that the crisis were deep. Remember the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa was in distress many strong sub-Saharan African countries, Nigeria, South Africa, Angola, the powerhouses, who were going into recession. Mm. We escaped recession, right? So the but we had an IMF bailout. Well, we can talk about the IMF bailouts. Mm. You know, those are some of the, the distractions. That is one of 17, you know, IMF programs that come with bailouts. When you have an economy against the background of global financial crisis, which was lingering and is still lingering today, when you have <coughs> an economy against BRICS, the meltdown by the Greek, Greek countries led by China, India at the time, when you have what we coined in one word, doing so, two and a half years, lack of supply of gas from Nigeria, which led VRA to buy th uh, crude at very high over 100 you know, um, $100 per barrel at the time it peaked before it fell. And as you progress, when in 2013, 2014, you do a budget with $99 and it falls the price per barrel according to the act, PRMA. And then it falls to $44 and then $40 per barrel. Not even half of what, you know, you were expecting, right? Then the economy was in such a state mm. that that I think if you if you lose that context, right, you may oversimplify. I, 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 I do not want us to lose the context, Mr. Tekwe. But if I may just finish this thought, mm, if I may. Mm. So I'm saying that the we had growth falling from about nine percent to three point six percent. As I said, we barely escaped recession. Other countries were in recession. You couldn't have a strong economy. And particularly the power crisis, the power crisis affected business, mm. just as VRA. Mm. And by analogy, it affected the banks. Mm. And that is the genesis of the non-performing loans. But Mr. Tekwe, the, so the, the, financial, the, the banking crisis, as we have come to know, was not only as a result of financial or economic issues, Clearly, it's been established that there were issues of shareholders recklessly appropriating funds. You are quoting from the asset quality review. We can come to that as yes. well. Yes. I wanted to deal with that as well. You have talked about the economic side, about the no, global no, no. meltdown. Well, no, you, 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 know, okay. you stopped me in my track. Okay. I'm, because, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yes, because that's, that's the point. Okay. You had non-performing loans, right. which I was just giving the background. Okay. So, yes, of course, you have the non-performing loans, mm -hmm. which were the most, you know, then like the U.S., which led to 1933. Um, the, um, I mean, these things are not new. Um, is there, were there regulations that prevented banks, you know, from entering into non-bank business? I would hope that we, we pay attention to that because that was one of the major 
you know, problems, just like the U.S. banks that went into recession. You're suggesting that, that there were no regulations barring no, 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 no. shareholders? I'm or... saying we must enhance the regulations. I'm, I'm being very careful with my words. Okay. Because I don't want to go into, you know, the absolutes. This didn't exist. That No, you can't have a Bank of Ghana <laughs> with that quality. I, I need you, uh, excuse me. I need you yeah. as a former finance minister to tell me what alternative you had in resolving this crisis no, because I, a lot of the people within the uh, your party have criticized the management of the bank crisis by this present administration it essentially means that you had an alternative i, I don't I, no i don't yes of course i'll come to that okay. but you wouldn't understand the alternatives okay. if you didn't understand the problem so okay. i'm saying one there were no performing loan mm. issues right two which brought dkm and others down you know you had the governance issues which you were you were talking about it's true that you know, some liquidity may have been displaced, misplaced and all may that. Have, also, or was displaced? Was misplaced, yes. Okay. You know, and some, because some of the cases are important anyway, but some, you know, were misplaced. If I have to, you know, look at the official reports, mm. then you have, you know, uh, three, you, you had the, I was talking about the use of depositors funds for non-banking, mm. you know, business, mm. which is, being regulated in many countries mm. it led to the downfall you know in fact that was one of the premises for the global financial crisis money going into real estate and other you know and then lending to individuals so yes to the solutions once we realize you know after the audit we on our own volition and by the way it wasn't an imf in position mm. went to parliament in fact the same month November of 2015, that we were presenting the budget, we were also presenting the Energy Sector Levies Act because the risk at the time had to do with the energy sector depression, which I was talking about. Mm. And we needed to keep VRA in particular, you know, producing power. Right. Today, ESLA is bringing in $3 billion. So I think it will be <laughs> those who say we didn't do anything, and three billion, remember, is about one quarter the revenue from VAT, domestic VAT. It's about one third the revenue, annual revenue from corporate income taxes from the last you know, reports you know, which I checked. We, secondly, with 250 million Ghana cities of the first extra flows, we did the first refinancing. We did the first refinancing of banking sector debt. And what we did was to inject 250 million as liquidity to the banks and then took off 2.2 billion Ghana cities of VRA debt based on the strength. And by the way, we did this with the Association of Bankers. Now, Mr. Tekwe, there were structural challenges, there were deficiencies, and you're still pumping money into a basket when you that have holes no. in it. No, 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 no. Let's not oversimplify the issue. Mm. I think you are, you know, that's a narrative, mm. right? Mm. When, when, and let me, let me add a second. Mm. We did another term sheet, 600 million US dollars, which was to resolve the energy, the second aspect of the energy crisis, which is those like Suno Asogli and the rest who had, you know, uh, provided power and because of subsidy and others were not being paid. We were attacking the issue structurally because it is tripartite, right? You know, it is simple to say you give money to the banks. No, what we did was we brought together contractors who were owed by the banks, VRA and the Ministry of Finance, then the bankers, right? So the money that, was, that went to the banks was in fulfillment. Because if you gave the money, there was a chance, and I'm not impugning anything, but, you know, but it could happen if you give the money you know, to, let's say, the creditors of the banks and whatever, the chances are that they may not go to the bank. But they already have been given money. I'm talking that, about structure. But they were already, already have been given monies that, according to the report, were dissipated. No, but this is non perform No, no, no. Please, there isn't one solution. And I'm talking about the liquidity support. That's what I'm talking about. Banks like Capital Bank, for instance, <coughs> had taken liquidity support from the central bank. Has the central bank stopped liquidity support today? It is a function. Well, of course, there is a, is it is a, a function, is but, but a the function? central bank no, has to also monitor. I'm saying, no, I'm saying okay. that, let's answer the question. Mm. 
Has the central bank, can anybody tell me that the central bank, which is a backstop, mm. has stopped liquidity support to banks? I do not think because so. That I, do not is any, one, I do not have information no, to because suggest. That is one of the, I will be surprised, yeah, because I that be is surprised. one of the functions. So, Mr. Tukwe, if, I, so if, let I, me, if let me, I get let me you just, right, let me, a, a post-NDC <laughs> government, post-2016, if you had won the elections, I want to believe you wouldn't have handled things the way this administration of has. Of course, we, the, it's, the action started with us a quality review report. Would you have closed down banks? Would, would we have closed down banks? It's based on recommendations. I'm saying that one, the immediate, the immediate problem facing the, the economy, of course, DKM, you know, was closed down, mm. right? It can be a microfinance. So if you want precedent, mm. right? Mm. At the time, mm. you know, we're being edged. You know, well, it was practically insolvent, yeah, so and I mean, there was, there was really, it, it was really non-functioning before the government stepped in. Isn't it the case with many other banks that were closed down today? But they were functioning. Before no, I'm they saying left. that I'm asking you a question. Isn't it the case? Now, if a bank is functioning, mm. if a bank is functioning, then, as a manager of the economy, you then have to look at the consequences of your action, because it is not you are making a distinction between a bank that is not functioning and a bank that has problems, but is functioning. And I'm saying that is where the difference lies, because you have to weigh, and based on the global financial crisis, let me repeat, based on problems in other economies and the rest, you don't rush, because one bank was closed, Lehman Brothers, and another one in the US during the global financial crisis. The effects and the ramifications were so severe that no banks were made to fail in the US. The same thing happened in the UK, the Royal Bank, you know, which was you know, halfway between liquidation, today it's operating, right? And again, the EU, you know, the Americas and everything decided that they have to assess the impacts of bringing down banks. And so if a bank is functioning, then one has to take his time to see whether the bank can be salvaged, which is exactly, by the way, some of the banks you say, you know, were healthy or are healthy today or as of 2017, they benefited from the 2.2 billion restructuring and the 250 million cash injection. Why do I say that? You're talking about the guts? No, I'm talking about the measures we took. I told you that Which banks, with 250, excuse me, I'm mm. saying that with 215 million mm. cash injection, mm and the strongest love flows, mm. we refinance 2.2 billion of VRA's debt, energy okay. sector debt. Okay. It was with 13 banks, including some of the strongest banks How that many we have of today. Them? I said 13 banks. You, and for that reason, th excuse me, the, I'm saying, if, if, let, let's take our time. To take, it easy, yeah, so, take it no, easy, Mr. Take it easy, take it easy, take it easy. Yeah, so the interventions mm. may be good, mm. so that I don't lose my team. Okay. You know, yes. And I'm saying that some of the banks which are said to be strong today, <coughs> right? Benefit are strong mm. because they had ESLA injections, not just in 2016. But if you take the ESLA report, and we don't have much time, mm. but if we have, if you take the ESLA report, mm. which I have here, it tells you that they continued to enjoy ESLA injections until the ESLA bond was you know, floated in 2018. My only so question to you, so, uh, if you would me. allow me, my only question to you, Mr. Okay, Tukwe, yes. are all these 30, 13 banks still functioning? The majority are functioning. How many? Please, I, I don't have the list. You don't but have I the can list. assure okay. you that, mm. <laughs> you know, based on the, some are not functioning. Mm. Some are certainly, you know. That's uh, just what I wanted to failed. get. get, yeah, get no, yeah. no, some are failed. Okay. Yes, some are among those, you know, which have which have been liquidated. So, Mr. Sobre, uh, so an yes. NDC government <coughs> that saw the financial situation of UT Bank and Capital Bank, banks that were practically insolvent, were illiquid, and uh, had uh, a negative capital adequacy ratio, would you have saved them? I give you the example. I said that when a bank gets to the situation where it cannot be saved, right, then you take action. Then you take action mindful of the consequences of your action. So, and so for you example, you've not answered the question, Mr. Tekbe. <coughs> Based on the situation I presented to you, UT Bank Capital Bank, illiquid, insolvent, a negative capital adequacy ratio, would you have saved that bank? And tell me, then you can tell me about 
you know, the consequences. I am saying that, mm. I am saying mm. that the report that is being followed and its updates mm. were commissioned. Mm. Various recommendations were made mm. in that report and we were following that report. Did that include, we for, did that include yes. the shutting down of some banks? Of course, yes. There were recommendations. I'm saying the, the same report is being used and, the, and it's updated. But, but people within your own administration have criticized the central bank's move. They said they've been, um, you know, they've been high-handed in the way they've handled the, the because, banks into the crisis. No, excuse me, because people in government and unfortunately public servants, right, mm. have also accused us of not doing anything. And I'm just telling you, that I'm just giving you examples of what we did. And I'm saying that the strength, the strength of funds that is being used, in any case, which is the ESLA, which we have said will last three to five years, has been extended to seven to 10 years. It is bringing in, and let me, let me quote the official report. You know, so you understand what we are, and by the way- So this ESLA is, was gonna resolve all the challenges? No. I didn't say that. <laughs> well, but everything you've, said, that. everything you've talked about has been ESLA. No, no, no. I don't even being fair with me. Okay. I just told you, mm. you know, that we did restructuring. Okay. Yes, I just told you, you know, that the governance issues were, yes, you know, on the table. The governance right? issues, yes. for instance. So they were on the... Okay, you go ahead me, and then I'll yes. come back to the... So yeah. I am saying that mm. 3.2 billion of, on average going to increase to 4, projected to increase to 4.4 a total of 30 billion approximately that's 29 you know billion by 2022 just around the corner mm. is what we are expecting to flow from Islam. at least we are told today that the cost and if as you said you know the work on Esla, sorry uh, excuse me the, the work on the restructuring has come to a close which it shouldn't be because even the advanced countries are reeling with their 10-year restructuring. Anyway, I'm saying that if we are going to continue, then the bedrock is going to continue. If we had 15 you know, billion, that tells you, of course, it's not everything here that is somehow for institutional strengthening, but the road levy, which is for clearing areas, which we use part, again, for, to pay uh, contractors and their banks. So it's not just, we use part of it to restructure toward it, which today is not being done. So these are the uses. So the systemic energy problems and they were resolved. So I'm saying that if you look at the premium, if you need funds for the restructuring, right? If you need funds for the restructuring, then you would see the strength of the flows. By the way, we were of the belief that given this, the strength of these flows, right? We were not going to mainstream this revenue and there will be no need to borrow again. At the moment, this revenue is being mainstreamed and we are borrowing, you know, for the banking sector restructuring, right? At the, at the strength, this is official projections which I am quoting. So let me recap the notion that we didn't do anything. By the way, another action to tell you that it's not just you know, ESLA, we pass most of the banking laws that are being used today. The deposit protection. The deposit insurance, mm. the deposit protection insurance, the Bank of Ghana Act itself is mm. major revision that mm. strengthens the independence mm. of the, the settlements and all of, mm. yes, the and many, the forex and we took about, you know, I stand for correction, five, uh, three to four, you know, uh, banking, you know, laws together with the PFM Act, the Revenue Act, and whatever. You know, about 12 laws for the financial and public and public sector. You so, know, so, 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 what you're saying is that now, you have no difficulty at all with so the actions me, so taken me, by the central bank. Safe to say that they have suggested that your government no, didn't do anything about the situation. No, I'm saying that mm. if you go back again into our history, mm. right? Mm. And this is what I'm saying. For example, we had a non performing assets recovery trust. Which is, called, which is what you call a bad bank. Mm. And in fact, if you look at the restructuring that we did, mm. right, which is to use ESLA to take off non-performing loans, right, ring fence them, 
and then use the salary to pay over time. That is three to five years. Means that you have created, you know, you have referenced the non-performing loans, you have, you have put them in what you call the non-performing, and then the collection of those loans, right, non-performing loans, will continue, as they are continuing today, by the liquidity salaries, right? It will continue. But, and you will save jobs. But, you would, excuse me, but, you will save but, jobs. Okay. You will save investments. Mm. You know, as you are... At the moment, have we yes. lost anything? Pardon? Have we lost anything at the moment? Of course. Employees at home. Right? I hope, I'm not sure that... I don't think we are being sensitive to that. There are employees at home who have lost their jobs. Right? There are depositors who have not been paid. A lot. From the universal banks to the savings and loan down to the microfinance companies, there are depositors who have not been paid. If you look at the 2019 you know, budget, the depression in the financial sector is leading the financial sector and the no, services Mr. sector. Mr. Let me Mr. finish. Mr. No, please please allow me. Please yes. allow me. You were talking about you what, asked about the cost. You were, you're talking about what Esla was going to do to help service the non-performing loans within the banking industry. Now, I even you didn't want this to draw no, no, too no, much no, on hold on, So you hold pose on, a question. Hold on, hold on. No, no, please. Hold on, please hold on. Yes. Even <laughs> before ESLA, some banks have received liquidity support. You have told me that some of the banks that are doing well today, which include the 13 banks, received support from ESLA. And they continue to receive ESLA funds today. That's the point I'm but making. But you have also said that yeah. amongst the 13 banks, we've had some banks that have been closed down. Of course, yes. So the liquidity support in itself was not was not the, the only solution to, to resolving the crisis. Yeah, but you do have, why are you emphasizing on the banks that have collapsed? Why are you not emphasizing the benefit to the economy? Or excuse because me, many more have this. collapsed. No, please, please, please. Okay. No, you don't have the statistics. You and no, I but, don't but have you the also statistics. Don't have the statistics. Yes, I asked you out of the 30, no, you couldn't the give me the number. No, if the mm. synopsis had addressed it, mm. right, I would have brought it. And also, I'm being prudent, okay. also in mentioning names here, okay. right? Okay. But you didn't mention some. Okay. You didn't mention the ones that failed. Mm. You haven't mentioned the ones that are standard. Mm. But, but can and we agree that me. the financial support was not going to be the panacea to the crisis that we had in the banking it is industry? Not. I just listed for you that we even took action on loss, right? Mm. And I just told you also that we, we conducted the, you know, the review. Mm. So the asset quality action. review. Of course, yes. Uh, do you feel so, do you so feel do you feel ashamed that the then running mate uh, to the president, Nana, um, Dr. Baumia, had consistently used the crisis within the banking industry as a campaign against your your, your, your government? Why then? should I be ashamed? Excuse that today, my, he, that no, today he feels now. vindicated. Vindicated? He does feel vindicated. The new tax is still in place. Remember. ESLA was described as a nuisance tax, right? Mm. And remember, we do not have the sort of mayhem that was predicted. I just told you that the majority of banks, right, mm. looking at the ones that have been liquid, the majority of the quality of the banks that came to the table, the majority of banks that benefited are still operating. And they're operating... Oh, today, you're, saying, today you're saying majority out of the 13. You, yes. you initially said you didn't have the figures. Now you say majority. Have, no, I don't have the figures. I'm no, saying, but now you say majority no, no, no. of the 13 please because me. you told me 13 benefited. I said, please, mm. if you could listen, I okay. said based on some of the banks you were citing mm. and the ones I know mm. which have been consolidated, mm. which have been collapsed, mm. right? Mm. I'm saying that, you know, the majority of, that, of those 13 banks, you know, are operating, you know, today. Do you think there was any political motivation at all in the actions taken by the central bank? I think we address that to the to the governor. Do you think so? I think you can address that to the governor. If we can Do move you think on. some of the banks that were no, shut down do not deserve been... to be shut down? Well, let me address the question right this way. <clears throat> if you have two groups of banks, right, and you are using GAT, which is going to be based on pensions for me and you, right? Mm and guarantee, right, which two of us could pay, could be held, you know, through taxes, right? If you use those mechanisms to protect banks, which are still in the hands of certain shareholders, 
but you fail to use that mechanism, right, to protect other shareholders, then you, exp you expose yourself to some of the So charges. you think the central bank was not fair in that action? It was not exactly fair in all its actions it took? I, I, I don't think you should be pushing me. No, you know, no, 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 because you have just you said. You asked me a question. No, because you I'm have saying, just said. No, 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 excuse me, mm. excuse me. You asked me. Mr. Secretary, are, no, you, no, are no. you scared of saying it as it is? No. The last time I was here, mm. a headline was given mm. that I took responsibility. I don't want to be personal about this. Okay. And I'm saying that I'm giving you the basis okay. on which, because as I said, I do read. Okay. And I'm giving you the views okay. of the public, which I think should be adequate. Okay. And I'm saying that mm. if you use a mechanism, one mechanism, right, to save a group of banks, whose shareholders are still holding those shares today through the mechanism of GATT, through the mechanism of consolidation and others, right? But you fail to use that mechanism, right, to address the problems of other banks, including those that were downgraded, right, and which could have been operating within the 15 million, right, and the 200, remember there's a big gap. And I would hope that we'll have time for solutions. You know, because I think, I think, as I said, I would have wished, you know, because what we are talking about, it has been repeated. Let's talk about the solution. Yes. Mm. One, one of the solutions, right? So I'm saying that you open yourself, if I may finish that thought. Mm, okay, do. So you op that's when you open yourself to the charge of discrimination, right? And so do you believe they've, they've discriminated? I'm saying the facts. What I believe is immaterial. I think we are pursuing public policy. Let's be mindful. Now what we are pursuing is public policy. And let us discuss public policy. Let us not personalize, because that is what is muddying the, you know, the waters. Let us discuss public policy. And among the solutions, what I have said is one of the genuine you know, solutions. I, I mentioned creating a bad bank, which we did, we have in our history, non-performing assets recovery trust, which I said also underpinned the offloading, I mentioned tiering, and what we mean by tiering is that within the category of banks, since the banks, even or take, let's, let's take the universal banks first, mm. right? Mm. The minimum capital requirement is 400. You would agree with me that there are banks today which may be operating maybe at 800 million, mm. especially those that are foreign or multinational. multinational. They may be operating at 800 million, mm. or they may be operating 600 million, mm. Right, and so even within that category, they are not all the same. Right now, if you move 400 million, the next group of banks are the savings and loan banks. Capital may be increased, we are told next year, but today you need only 15 to 20 million. You can see the gap between 15 million and 400 million. It was going to be 230 million. Your point is what? My point is, you could have given the opportunity for some of the banks, right, to operate between 15 million and 400 million, and not necessarily judge them by 400 million standards. But, but as you, you may know? be aware, Mr. Secretary, the, the central bank gives different reasons for the closure of the banks. We are looking for solutions. I'm, mm. I'm citing solutions that are used elsewhere. Okay. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's. Okay. You know, let's not make everything uh, Ghanaian. Mm. Because there are experiences elsewhere. Mm. Okay? Mm. And so I'm saying, we are talking about solutions, mm. right? Yes, yeah, so I'm enumerating the solutions. So I'm saying that given the gap that you have between 15, 20 million and 400 million, mm. you could have banks operating at 100 million, you could have, have banks operating at 200 million. After all, their capital ratio determines the loan that they have to give, mm. right? And then if you come down, looking at the gap between two million for microfinance, I'm, I'm not sure what rural banks, maybe five million, and 15 million for savings and loan, you could have savings and loans bank, you know, operating around six million, five million, not necessarily at 15 million. So the impairment that we are talking about for some of the banks, when we talk about their impairment, does not mean that they have lost all their 15 million. And I was on the, and, and I was, frankly, I was, I was on a, a, a panel, mm. you know, where an official of the central bank indicated that 
there are shareholders today who do not want to be tapped and are therefore paying the depositors who they owe. That is true. Which means that, yes. Which means that, could we have saved them to it, operate it, somewhere? It, it, it went me. way beyond that. It was way beyond that. There were other regulatory Tell issues, uh, issues of, um, you know, th um, Inter -part, inter related party transactions and all that. So, but those are the issues to be resolved. Of course, there are some which are so bad. Mm. Remember, the, let's let's make two distinctions, mm. right? Mm. Let's make two distinctions. Mm. I'm saying, let me be extreme. If there is theft of depositors' funds, mm. the shareholder. The employees. We'll, the we'll come back to, we'll come back to the solutions. Me. We'll come back no, to the no, solutions. But let, quickly, I just want to. Let me, I just let me wanted to address no, one. Let me, let me, I just wanted to address one question. No, uh, did me, you accept the notion? Would you, would you me, do you accept the notion? No. Would you uh, let me that, clarify this point? Quickly, I'll allow you to do yes, that. Please. Would you accept the notion, Mr. Techbear, that the banking sector was ruined under your administration? No, please. Emphatic no. Because we we passed the necessary laws, right? We brought in the relevant tax revenue which was described as a nuisance tax which is you know being used today so no i wouldn't i wouldn't and i said that we did the restructuring we didn't lead to losses we didn't lead to disinvestments so quickly, i don't see quick, why i should accept mm, you know that mm. so the point i'm talking Let's about wrap up quickly on the solution yes so i'm saying that if okay i was making a decision between graft which needs to be prosecuted and the lack of clarity in regulations. For example, if we had a regulation that said, stick to core banking when you collect money from depositors, right? Don't use the money for a, a related business. Did we need that. to have a regulation of on course, that? Of course, yeah, the US had How it. How on do you, do you learn to a related party Why, at rates, as, at very concessionary rates, way below the market uh, rate? Was that right? I am saying, I think we need to be patient. Mm. Greed is not a Ghanaian phenomenon only. And I'm saying that the US had occasion, right? The US had occasion to pass a law mm. to this effect. Mm. We can bemoan, you know, the failings of human nature and not move ahead to bring in the law as we did to enhance the laws, to enhance the regulations, to prevent. Otherwise, we would live to see the same thing happen yeah, again. Is that what has been done? I'm, I'm not aware of the law yet. Mr. Tekwe, thank you very much for your time. Mr. <laughs> yeah, Tekwe is former finance minister uh, on the one-on-one -on -one here with us on Business Focus. We'll